Brother, you missed me yesterday. He goes, Salaamu Alaikum, brother. He goes, how come you don't make takfir on the rulers? Yeah, how come you don't make takfir on the rulers? I thought to myself, you know what, yeah? This issue is an issue that's not really been dealt with for a while, isn't it? You know, you know, you know the khawarij, or the people who make takfir on the people unjustly. They say so-and-so is a kafir unjustly. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, these people, they're going to come, they're going to rise, and then they're going to be taken out. And then they're going to come again, taken out. So you always see that they'll disappear, or quieten down, you won't hear about them. You know, Al Qaeda that came, then it disappeared. You don't hear about it. Then ISIS come and it disappeared. You don't hear about it. But it's slowly, slowly. If you, if you remain quiet on this thing, eventually they're gonna come back. It's important to discuss it. And I thought to myself, Subhanallah, these people, if only they understood how to actually understand the evidences. Because they'll bring you an ayah. Allah said, and this is the ayah they always bring. They say, Allah said, whoever does not judge by what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent down, i.e., the Quran, right? Whoever doesn't judge by what Allah sent down, humul kafir. Now this person is a kafir. And this person is a is a kafir. So now if you take that ayah and it's apparent, you think to yourself, right, okay, the president of so and so Muslim country is not ruling by the Quran, he's ruling by democracy. Or he's only got you know what I'm saying? So you think to yourself, right, okay, he's not judging by what Allah sent down, so that means that he is now a he's a kafir. But I'm saying that's not how the Quran works. The Quran and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not a book or not books that you can go to and just open like it's like you're like that man's reading um, what, the book, what books people read nowadays? Twilight Twilight, they read Twilight and that? Yeah, man I said, we used, to, we used to read like a series of unfortunate events You might remember? Yeah, know, you know what I mean? Of Mice and Men Huh? Of Mice and Men, yeah, it's not like <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not like you can just open up Of Mice and Men and understand X, you know what I'm saying? There's sciences that you have to study Arabic language, usul al-fiqh, usul al-tafsir, mustalah al-hadith, science that come together and then they help you understand the Quran. So for example, if you take this ayah and you really put this ayah under the scope and you analyze and you study it and you apply the sciences to it, you'll see that the ayah doesn't mean what you think it means. Because it's not, it's, do you understand? Mm. So for example, if we do that now with the ayah, look, whoever rules by what, or judges by what, what Allah said, is a kafir. Okay, let's look at the ayah in Arabic. What man? Allah said man. But what's man? Man to feed the umum. Man is one of the words in the Arabic language that benefits you generalization. Man, if you translate it, it means anyone, okay? Anyone or whoever, right? So man, anyone who rules by Avni Allah's voice from the kufar. So the man here means anyone. So why have you just restricted it to the rulers? That's the first point. Do you not judge in your life? Do you not judge as a father? Do you not judge as a brother? Do you not judge as a husband? Do you not judge as a businessman? Do you not have to judge in your work? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you not have to judge amongst your friends, right? Anyone, anyone who doesn't judge by Allah's law is a kafir. So first you have to understand that. Who restricted it to just the rulers? This is talking about any Muslim or any, any human being upon whom the Quran was sent or to whom the Quran was sent and this person is refusing to judge by it. Does that make sense? So that, that's point number one. It's not just talking about the rulers. Okay? Now, Allah said, Yahkum. Man lam yahkum. Anyone who does not judge, anyone who does not judge by what Allah said down is from the kuffar. Who said judgment here just means on a political level? Who said judgment just means political level? Right? Who said judgment here only talks about law, like governmental law? Because if I think it's sort of Nahal, Allah he talked about the people who would bury their daughters alive. When they bury the daughters, what did Allah say? Sa'ama yahkumun. Evil is what they are judging. So pay attention. What does this mean? Allah is referring to their action is evil. Meaning, you are judging by Allah's law in your life by obeying Allah's command. And when you disobey Allah, for example, you bury your daughter. When you disobey Allah because you swear. When you disobey Allah because you fornicate. When you disobey Allah because you watch porn. When you disobey Allah because you're bashing. So a lot of these guys, they bash, you know that, right? Yeah, they talk all this crowd online and, and they, you know, they're talking to girls, sliding into their DMs on Twitter and then, you know, they do their thing. So I'm saying, these guys here, they're sinning. They're not judging by Allah's law in terms of their own life. It's a very important point to understand what life. They're not judging by Allah's law in their personal life, in their personal sphere, okay? Allah referred to that as judgment. 
It's not just on a government Yes it's true The governmental scale Is called judgement And you in your own life Is also judgement Today you have to judge By Allah's law By not sinning You have to judge By Allah's law When, you, when a woman comes by you have, to, you have to lower your gaze Your actions are also judgement That's very important to understand So now we benefit two things We know that the man Means anyone It's not just talking about the rulers Anyone comes into this Whoever it is that you might be Will come into this Yeah um, And the yahkum the hukum, the judging, is not just governmental judging, political judging, legal judging, it's even judging in your own life, the sins and the actions and the good deeds that you do. If you pray today, you read Qiyam Ulaid, you fasted, you judge in accordance to Allah's law in your life. Does that make sense? Then Allah said, ma. Ma again also benefits your generalization. Man lam yahkum bi ma. Ma. Anyone who doesn't judge by anything and whatever Allah sent down. Meaning Allah sent down rulings and legislation pertaining to marriage. So you have to judge by Allah's law and that. Allah sent them rulings and legislation pertaining to business. You have to judge by Allah's law and that. Allah sent them rulings and legislation on how to raise your children. Judge by that. And Allah also sent them rulings and legislation on how to judge a country. How to judge between the people in a country. So, ma means any type of thing that Allah sent down. Whatever Allah sent down, you have to judge by all of it. To the point where Ibn Taymiyyah Taala said that to the Sahaba, according to this verse, a judge, this verse would apply to a man and two children come to him. And each one has written writing and they say judge between us who's got the better handwriting. That man has to judge by Allah's law. According to the Sahaba, that man will be considered a judge. So that means according to these people, if that man, his heart becomes soft for a second and he gives the wrong judgment towards another kid because he likes another kid and he says your handwriting is better even though it was worse, then he became a kafir. So you're going to become a kafir just because you tell someone that your handwriting is bad? It's all, when it's good Does that make sense So that means you're going to become a kafir If today you didn't judge According to If, if you bashed today You become a kafir According to these guys If you looked at a girl You slid into a DM You became a kafir Does that make sense And then Pay attention This is why we say These people are khawarij Because the khawarij Made Takfir Of the Muslims Because of major sins They said Oh you drunk alcohol Kafir Oh you slept with a girl Kafir Oh you backbited Kafir You lied Kafir now these guys don't say that But they take the same principle And they apply it Wherever they want to apply it At least the kuffar Back in those days They'll be honest They'll tell you Yes, 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 yes Allah said Evil is what you judge Evil is what you judge That means any sin That you do is, a, is, is You're a kafir for it now They were wrong But at least they were consistent These guys they, They're not consistent either Does that make sense? So now pay attention Then how do we understand The last part of the verse Where Allah said uh, How do we understand Allah said But they're kuffar Allah said, anyone who doesn't judge by what Allah said, then they're kufar. So then a person will think, okay, calm. That's right. So if you do sin in your life, and if you do not apply the, the Quran and judge it in every aspect of your life, whether it be marriage, business, finance, and law, and whatever have you, then you're kufar in all the situations. We say no. Because kufar is of two types. There's major and there's minor. There's major and there's minor. And this is why you have to take the tafsir of the salaf. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum ajma'een was the one who explained this ayah and who was he? he was the one the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for him he, he, the Prophet said Allahumma faqihu fi al-deen wa allimhu ta'weel oh Allah give him deep understanding of the religion and teach him the interpretation interpretation of the Quran so he understood it so how did he explain the verse? he said this kafirun here this kufr here this disbelief here he said this is not the kufr that you guys are running around with it's not the major kufr. This is kufrun duna kufrin. It's the kufr that's lesser than the major kufr. It's the minor kufr. In another uh, narration, I think narration mentioned Sunnah Bayhaqi or the other one mentioned Bayhaqi. But either way, he said, this is not disbelief in Allah and the angels. It's not the diff- kufr when you're, when you left the fall of Islam. This is minor kufr. It's not major kufr. It's minor, minor kufr. Does that make sense? Right? And this is something that's understood. Like even in Sahih Bukhari, and we know, we know we're not going to say Sahih Bukhari is a murjah and Sahih Bukhari doesn't understand Iman and Kufr and so on and so forth. In Kitabul Iman, the book of Iman, the, which, is, which, is, which is the second book that he brings in the Sahih after uh, Kitab, uh, huh? Kitab Bada, uh, 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 was it? Kitab Bada al Wahi. Yeah, the Kitab when the, when the beginning of the revelation started. So Kitab al Iman, what did he say? He said, he has a chapter in, okay? He says, Kufrun do no Kufr. Okay, or something like that he chapters it. Basically he mentions the minor kufr, the minor kufr. And he brings a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, I was shown the fire وَأَكْثَرُ أَهْلِهَا النِّسَاء And the majority of its inhabitants, its people, is the women. And then the Sahaba, uh, and then the Prophet said, يَكْفُرْنَ They disbelieved. 
And the, and the Sahaba said, Are you kufrna billah? Did he disbelieve in Allah? Because they thought, is it major kufr? Did he disbelieve in Allah? And then the Prophet said, no. Ya kufrna al-ashir wa ya kufrna al-ihsan. Disbelieved in their husbands. The good that their husbands done for them. They disbelieved in it. Because a woman, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man would do so much for her. And if she would say to him, she, he would do so much good, so much good, so much good, that one day he does something that she doesn't like. And then she would say, Ma ra'aytu minka khayran qat. I've never seen any good from you. She disbelieves all that good that he done for him. Does that make sense? To show you that the woman did a kufr. But that's not major kufr. All the good he done for her. Yes, so all the good he done for her. Huh? You said all the good he done for her. No, 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 he's not getting it. He's not getting it. The good he done for his wife. Yeah? But the point is that that's, that's kufr. The Prophet claims the kufr. But it was minor kufr. It's minor kufr. Because they said, Ayyakufr, did not believe in Allah? They said, no, they didn't believe in Allah. So they're still Muslims. But they, they're doing major sin. And that major sin, it reached to the point of minor kufr. So the kufr is two types. So then from that, we now understand the following. That, number one, men, anyone who judges for other than Allah's law is a kafir. Yahkum, hukum, is not just on a governmental, political, legal level. It's even in your personal lives. You have to apply Allah's law and judge Allah's law in your personal life. Ma, anything that Allah sent down, whatever chapter of fiqh or whatever aqeed, whatever it might be, you have to judge by all of it. Even the guy who's doing bid'ah is now not judging by Allah's law, okay? Then the Prophet said, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ula'ika humul kafir, and now we understand the kufr is the minor kufr. It's the minor kufr. So then if you ask me, the reason I don't do takfir <laughs> on the rulers, and it's not in my position to do takfir anyway, by the way, it's, 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 takfir is something that's an issue of ijtihad, okay? If I come to you and I say to you, Akhi, what's the ruling on uh, binary trading. You're going to say, Allahu Alam, this is a new contemporary issue after have to ask the ulama. That's with regards to issues that are sub-branches of the religion. Issues of Iman and Kufr are foundations of the religion. You are quick to pass a fatwa and say, I would do takfir on him, don't worry, he's a kafir. But if I ask you, what's the fatwa on tahara in this situation? You say, Akhi, I don't know how to keep my bum. Please ask the sheikh. I don't know how to keep my bum. Do you understand? So you want to give fatwa, you want to give fatwa on issues that are major foundational issues of the religion, kufr and iman, but you don't want to give it on sub-branch issues like tahara and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? So it's not even for you to even ask, if Brother Imran, why don't you do takfir on the rulers? It doesn't even make sense. It's not even my position. It's only for the mufti, the qadi, the mujtahid to do takfir on the rulers. But even then, let's just say you asked me hypothetically and I was in a position to do so, whatever have you, the reason I would not do it is because of what I just explained to you now. Because, is the, because it's true. I do see the rulers judging by whatever Allah has sent down, but that's minor kufr. Minor kufr, don't take you outside of the of Islam. Only major kufr will take mine outside the fall of Islam. The ayah came twice in the Quran. Say that again, sorry? The ayah came twice in the Quran at other times. Yeah. With, did it with different endings. With different endings, yes. You mentioned that the fasiqun zalimun. Which again, further proof that not all who have been in Allah. It's true, but fisk kufr. can be major kufr, you know that, right? Yeah, yeah, major yeah. fisk can be kufr, a major zulm can be kufr. Because Allah referred to zulm in the shirka, la zulmun azim. That, that, that very shirk is the, is the greatest form of oppression. So, but yo, you, you, I understand where you're coming from. You see what I'm saying? But then there's a shubha that these men bring. It's very important shubha that they bring, yeah? They'll say, no, 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 no. Play this for like this powerful point, yeah? They'll say, no, 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 listen, 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 listen. We agree that he's, it is minor kufar uh, if, if, because of everything that you just said. But we will say he's only becoming a kafir if he totally removes the law of Allah from his life, or sorry, from the country. He takes the Quran and the Sunnah away and he places secularism. He places democracy. He takes the book of Allah away and he says, we're going to run by democracy. He changes the whole system. Pay attention, it's powerful, yeah? Is that Sandi? He said, look, he changed the whole law. So he's a kafir now. So we'll say, Akhi, but we just affirmed a second ago, we just affirmed a second ago, that yahkub hukum here doesn't just refer to on a government level, level. It only refers to it refers to government and your personal life. So what if he changed the whole legislation? He changed the whole legislation, but he still prays. And he still gives a cat. On a government level, he doesn't judge by Allah's law, but in his life he does. So he hasn't changed it, or has he? Because according to what you're saying, he would have to change everything. In his whole life, he would have to leave the law of Allah and I have to leave it on a political level. Because it's not just political, it's even Janazan. Another Shubha they bring is they say, again, look, another way to answer that Shubha they say, he will only become a kafir if he changes the whole law. So we say, okay, so that means you're basing the kufr on the number of sins. We say, what's your evidence for the number? And to prove that it's a number, because Sheikh Rabani said, look, okay, say I'm a ruler. Say I'm a ruler. And I rule by Allah's law completely. 
I rule by Allah's will completely and entirely. I judge by Allah's will. But one day, my, you, you know, my son, he commits a, a, a crime. He steals. And you come to me and you tell me my son committed a crime. Because my son, my heart goes soft for him for a second. So what do I do? In this situation, I slap him on the wrist and I say, don't do that again. But I don't give him the punishment of cutting his hand off. Did I rule by Allah's will? I didn't rule by Allah's will, right? So will I become a kafir? They'll say no. They say no. It's when you change the whole system. Okay, okay, calm. So I say, what about if I, if I, if, if ten times my son came to me, and ten times I changed the law for him? You know, you're not a kafir. What if I came hundred times? They say if you come thousand times, thousand times, thousand times, you're not going to be a kafir. Only when you change the law completely. So I said, what's it? So let's just say that there's only a thousand laws. There's not, but let's just say there's only a thousand laws. If I change 999, you won't call me a kafir. But if I change a thousand. You'll call me a kafir because I changed 100%. So your tikfir is based on a number. Right? Bring me the delil now. What's your delil you become a kafir based on the number of sins that you do? Where's your delil for that? Do you understand? So you might not doing tikfir on a number. Where's your delil for that? No delil. Does that make sense? But a person can become a disbeliever by judging by other than Allah's law if the heart becomes involved. For example, he says, I believe that secularism is equal to the Quran. I believe that the secularism or democracy is better than the Quran. Or if he believes that, uh, it, it does istihlal. He says, I believe democracy is halal for me to do. But this you will not know unless you ask him. You have to ask him. He has to say it's to bring it from his mouth. Because it's the action of the heart, right? It's like when Usama ibn Zayd and he killed the man in the battlefield. The man said, La ilaha illallah just before he died. Pay attention, look how deep this is. The man is killing Muslims on the battlefield and Usama is about to kill him. Just before Usama is about to kill him, he says, La ilaha illallah. So you think to yourself, right, he's, he's obviously only doing this just because he doesn't want to get killed, right? So Simon said, no, no, this guy's lying. He killed him. He killed him. And then when he came back to the Prophet and the Prophet said to him, Yeah, Osama, what did you do? You killed a man. He said, La ilaha illallah. What are you going to do when La ilaha illallah comes in the day of judgment? And then he tried to explain to the Prophet, no, he was only saying it because I was going to kill him. The Prophet said, Ashaqaqta qalbiha. Did you cut open his heart? It's the action of the heart. You don't know if he's lying or not. Does that make sense? And we're not saying you only become a kafir based on the actions of art. No, we say no, you can become an action on the limbs as well. If you step on a muscle, you become a kafir. If you just leave your praise, you become a kafir. But is there are some things that are related to the heart, some things related to the limbs. It's not me that makes that decision, it's the, it's the delete, does that make sense? That's why we don't make different rules. Well, anyone for that reason. Brothers and sisters, I need your attention for just one minute. Our brothers around the world, they need help. Some of them, if they don't get food and water to drink, they are going to die. And then there's others, like those who are back home, who live on the same streets as us. And if they don't get help in terms of spiritual help, they might lose their faith. Now, both those whose lives are in danger and whose faith are in danger, they both need to be helped. But I want to explain to you the repercussions of not helping both of them. You see, if you don't help those who are suffering when it comes to starvation, at least when they die, they will die Muslims. And all that they will leave or all that they will lose at the end is their life of this world. But like, if you don't help those brothers and sisters who are struggling in terms of their faith, if they die, then they might actually lose their afterlife and potentially be entered into the hellfire for a period of time, if not eternity. For that reason, it's important that we don't neglect these, these brothers. For that reason, we started up a project called Umrah with Amanda, where we take brothers and sisters from around the world, specifically the UK, specifically London, and we take them with us and we set up a program that facilitates for them to change. We also provide them support for when they return. And we always select a handful of brothers who can't afford it themselves. And this time we have taken on board more people without paying anything than we ever have before. And we are in urgent need of their costs being covered. So if you would like to help facilitate towards someone's life changing, then please go to the link below inshallah ta'ala and donate generously. Remember, if they change their life, then you're actually helping them inshallah ta'ala be a part of saving their afterlife. And in terms of reward, then any good that they do from this point onwards, if they change because of your donation and you're sincere, then you're going to get all that reward as well. So on the day of judgment, you get this mountain of good deeds, prayers, charity, fast, all this stuff that you've never done. But why did it come your way? Because you facilitated with Allah's permission for someone to make change. And then when he changed, he or she did all of these things. And now that reward is all on your scales on a day of judgment. So please, brothers and sisters, be as generous as you can. Go to the link below, donate like crazy. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.